before we get started. My brother had a 45 when we were kids. It was a spoof of Jaws, a reporter interviewing Jaws, but everything Jaws was saying was a clip from a famous song. I remember this. You do? Of course. Yeah, All the only thing I remember about it is like, are, are you planning on eating any more people? And he's like, I will, I will, I will, I will. Every time that came on the radio, it was, we went nuts. We mm-hmm. loved it. It's all of your songs as a joke. Why doesn't anyone do this anymore with I- their Beyonce's <laughs> and their Lizzo's? <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Welcome back to August, where our theme continues to be action heroes. Last time, we watched Jean-Claude Van Damme in Hard Target, and I have another action movie for us tonight. But you know, the realm of action heroism isn't just for the fellas anymore. Most may know her as Furiosa, but she is also known as the Atomic Blonde. Aha! Hello! Released in 2017 and directed by David Leitch, Atomic Blonde stars Charlize Theron, James McAvoy, Eddie Marzen, Toby Jones, and Basement alum John Goodman. It is based on the graphic novel The Coldest City by Anthony Johnston. Charlize Theron worked with eight personal trainers who, quote, basically made her puke every single day, unquote. She also regularly sparred with Keanu Reeves, who was simultaneously preparing for his role in John Wick 2. Craig, I know that this movie is going to deliver pulse-pounding action, and afterwards you might need this to <laughs> relax. A defibrillator? <clears throat> oh, it's... <gasps> Mine broke. I've had one of these. Oh, I love these things so much. It's a scalp massager. Okay. All right. All right. All right, Matt. Go on without me. Well, put down that bottle of peroxide and punch and fight your way on over to the old leather couch where we're going to be watching Atomic Blonde. East and West do not mistrust each other because we're armed. We mistrust each other because we're jerks. Tear down this wall. Mr. Reagan, go screw yourself. Oh, no, wall is coming down anyway. Okay, that's another bad one for Gorby. It's November 1989 in Berlin. How does it feel to climb up that wall wearing only a bathrobe? Tell me, how does Does it it feel? feel? How does that feel? He's a dead guy. He was killed by this mean man who steals his watch. Turns out it's a special watch. Later in London, ten fourteenths of a fortnight later, (laughs) Nude drinking Stoli is my favorite piece from Picasso's Blue Period. (laughs) And this film really exemplifies that. Bop, bop. (laughs) Lorraine Broughton is going in to be debriefed after her mission. MI6 is there. Toby Jones, the little man with the big face. (laughs) And also the CIA, but she doesn't want to talk to the CIA. Because she doesn't like that man. Cocksucker. What did you say? Who says what? I thought you said something. What did she say? Someone says what? That's what I heard. I'm not taking the bait. Lorraine is British. This is unclear. Shall we begin? And then we go back to the beginning. Lorraine is being sent to Berlin to find a guy named Spyglass. Who is a Stasi agent going to the other side. He's got a list of all of the secret agents in Europe. Hidden in a Swiss watch. It's an atomic bomb of information that could extend the Cold War for another 40 years. She needs to retrieve the watch and the man because James Gascoigne failed in the mission because he was killed. Our sources point to Yuri Bakhtin, KGB hatchet man with more than a dozen confirmed kills. Oh, uh, I saw him do it. Yeah, it's him. It's him. He's the guy. Yeah. Not a suspect. That's the guy. 
There's another British spy hanging out in Berlin and having the time of his life. His name is David Percival. Straight from the tit of the Virgin Mary. I find it hard to believe that the tit of Virgin Mary would dispense mid-shelf whiskey. Jeder weiß genau, was von ihm abhängt. Jeder ist im Stress. Major Tom. The count goes on. I always forget that that song exists. Yeah. And then I find out ex it exists and it makes me happy. Yes. <laughs> she gets off the plane gets into a car with these guys, it's the wrong car. They thought they were messing with the electric blonde. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, she's past electric. She's atomic! Percival comes in and helps her out. Sorry, I'm late. Sorry. Ah, you're late. There's a mysterious... This is Blue Monday on cough syrup. Boy, this movie was really sponsored by OK Booze. <laughs> Spyglass revealed that this list would expose a double agent by the name of Satchel. You expose this bastard, Satchel. You might find yourself taking tea at Buckingham Palace. Not with the Queen, but with the staff. <laughs> For that is what you are. You are the staff of the crowd. Lorraine goes to check out Gascoigne's apartment, and the police show up. The polizai! Come on out with your blonde up! They don't know what they're dealing with. Because it's not just Lorraine, it's Lorraine with a hose. This time Understands me. Something going on in there? Guys, what's with all the thumping? <laughs> Somebody set her up. Stole on ice. Stole on ice. I want a bad hangover. Guten Abend, Frau. I'm not speaking German tonight. Monsieur, three is not always a crowd. But tonight it is. French women. Side boob. At a bar, she meets Delphine. Dauphin? Delphine. Dolphin. Delphine LaSalle, who's a French secret agent. We can talk here, or you can meet me in this really cool club tomorrow. Sure, why not? How about we extend the story instead of you just talking to me now? Berlin is truly doomed. But Amy Mann will go on to a very successful solo career. Till Tuesday. Ah, shit! <laughs> that night she goes to the club and she meets up with Delphine, the, 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 the French woman. Study on the rocks. Do you pay attention? I was just so shocked that a classy blonde like you would order such mediocre booze. I've been dying to ask you a question. You know, Craig, I've been meaning to ask you a question for quite some years now. I'm not going to tear down this wall. They go to the ladies' room. There's a gun pulled. What do you know about Gascoigne? No one fights like Gaston, takes cheap shots like Gaston. No one persecutes harmless crackpots like Gascoigne. Oh, you're smart too? Okay, that's fine. Let's go back to my place and have erotic sex. <laughs> I wish I could show it to you, but I can't. Did she give you information? She gave me nothing. She gave me an orgasm. A little one. Yeah. You know, sometimes you, sometimes they're just little ones. She was young. I think she's just kind of one of those fashionable lesbians. Percival kills Yuri. And now he has the list. <laughs> Microfiche. Montage! Turns out Spyglass, that Stasi agent, he's memorized the entire list because he has a photographic memory. So they need to get him out, they need to get his family out. Over to the right side of the wall, which is actually the left side if you're looking at it from a north-south axis. Now look like a free man. Here is my passport, checkpoint Charlie officer. I had it taken on the day I was wearing this shirt. Lift up a car. No? Can't do it? I guess you're not my strong girl, are you? And this is on the day when the wall is coming down. What do we want? No more wall. When do we want it? 40 years ago. 
They walk him out of the building, but it turns out that there's all these snipers waiting for him so they can just kill him and kill the information in his head. And it's a perfect cover. Spyglass is shot by Percival? They duck into a building. You stay here, don't bleed to death. I'm going upstairs to kill all the bad guys. Uh, hold the elevator. <laughs> Lorraine gets in a fight with these two guys. One of them has a knife. One of them has very cruel intentions. She beats them up a lot and they just refuse to die. I get you with my rucksack. Oh, I stab. I stab in the in on the mine back. Oh, nine. Nine times you stab me. Nine. <laughs> then she gets in a fight with a bunch of guys. Oh, darn it. Oh, my balls. Ah, my sternum. Let me shoot you. I don't feel like listening to German today. <laughs> there we go. I love it when the damsel in distress fights back. Let's not bring lamps into this, please. They get out of there. They get into a car. Oh, they've escaped. No, they haven't. Into the river they go. Spyglass drowns. Lorraine almost drowns, but she doesn't because she is the atomic blonde and she is tough. It's me. I just attack you like that. Hello, it's me. Ah, I know that. It's me, Greg, your friend. You can trust me. Percival might just be this satchel character. He goes to Delphine's apartment and attacks her. Don't you hate it when you got a, you have a knife in your back, just yeah. in the part where you can't reach. That's why I got this. Oh, there you go. Lorraine shows up too late because Percival has killed Delphine. She catches up with him, shoots him, takes the list. Back at headquarters, she tells him that she has proof that Percival was the double agent. He was Satchel. You'd better have hard proof and a damn good explanation. Who are you to judge my actions? I'm your superior. Well, I'm your taller. And now Lorraine's saying she doesn't know where the list is, but she's got that list. The head MI6 guy says, all right, this whole mission never happened. Let's never talk about it again. So are we done here? What should I wear for my tea with the queen? Three days later, she's in Paris with a brown hair style. With that fancy guy who she met in the bar before when she first met Delphine. What? I've been a double agent the entire time. No, she's pretending to be a double agent, which makes her a triple agent? I don't know. I can't keep track. I never worked for you. You worked for me. And I work for Stoli. <laughs> and then she gets on a plane with John Goodman. Now he's going to double cross her and there's going to be a shootout on the plane. <laughs> Thanks for the watch. And she's like, no problem. I'm an atomic blonde. How did it live up to its second viewing for you? I forgot almost everything about the movie because it's a spy movie and that's how it happens with me. I, I can never follow spy movies. I forgot the plot of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy like halfway through the movie. Yeah. All I remember was the shot. And the reason I watched the movie in the first place was that I heard about the shot. A 12 minute long, seemingly uninterrupted take, you know. Seemingly. Yeah. Which is enough to watch the movie for. What I like about the fight scene, it shows that if you are fighting someone for a few minutes, it's exhausting. Yeah. And they are tired when they're in that apartment, you know, towards the end of it. And, you know, we didn't see that with Jean-Claude Van Damme in the last show. No. He just keeps on fighting. But in the end, the movie doesn't make much sense. When there are twists in the movie, when they happen, you have to be like, oh... That makes sense. Yeah. The watchmaker makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yuri makes sense. But that doesn't happen. Right. And if you want the twists, you have to have the clues laid out before that. Yeah, the plot's a little like a threadbare sweater. Just like, kind of threads <laughs> just going off everywhere. Yeah, but everything is said with great importance. But it's also so, so quietly. While the music is playing really loud! Yeah, the music. The soundtrack in this was way too assertive. 
I don't care. Like song after song, and uh, now do you? Oh, you remember this song? You remember this song? You remember this song? One after another after another, which is neat and it's fun, but it takes you out of the movie. The songs are in character. The songs are what would be playing in the late '80s in Berlin at that time. And a lot of the songs kind of evoke Berlin. Yeah, Der Kommissar, Falco, sure, the, singing in German. The German version of the Major Tom song. Yeah. Verstanden. This list must be really important and not a MacGuffin at all. That's a MacGuffin, Matt. What's the list? It doesn't matter. The MacGuffin is the reason for the plot. But the mystery in the movie is who is Satchel? When there's only three spies, really, in the movie, is it going to be McAvoy? Is it going to be Delphine? Is it going to be uh, Lorraine? Lorraine? It's not a surprise when it's revealed that it's Percival. And then it's kind of not a surprise when it's revealed that it's Lorraine. And then it's not a surprise when it's revealed that who the hell knows who it is. Yeah. I want to talk about Charlize Theron. Yes. I don't want to talk about her physicality. She nails all that. Mm -hmm. She does all the fighting and the jumping and the running and the shooting and all that. It's great. When she is called on to wear fashionable and sexy clothes, she does that well, too. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about all the other stuff. <laughs> and I think it's interesting that she's playing someone with no character. She has no personality. She has no backstory, obviously. She's just a fighting and kicking and problem-solving machine. Yeah. Almost like John Wick, but John Wick is sad about his dog. Yes. <laughs> What's your beef with Toby Jones? Toby Jones, modern-day Sir Dicky Attenborough. <laughs> and you know how I feel about Sir Dicky. <laughs> oh, no. Not a fan? Look at that guy. What do you look, at the, look guy. at the guy? Okay. That uh, doesn't mean he's a bad actor. <laughs> he is not a bad actor. I'm just kind of amazed that someone with such a lack of charm can have such an impressive career. Toby Jones, though, is a good choice for this because he is playing a spy. And a spy is supposed to be someone who blends in, which is why in real life there would not be anyone like Lorraine. And there would not be anyone like Percival because they're so huge. Yeah, Spy is the person who looks like nobody. A man in a gray suit that you don't notice when he gets off the train in Istanbul. I've never really liked James McAvoy. I think he's just a pretty face. Fine actor. I haven't seen Atonement. You haven't seen Atonement. I like him because of Atonement. And because I liked him as Dr. X in, in the X-Men prequels. Professor X. Please get it right. He didn't get his doctorate. He's just a professor. Well, he's an associate professor. X? I don't know. Yeah. Ask Stan Lee. I can't. Because he's dead, Matt. I know that. Yes. Nice. <laughs> this movie is centered around a moment that was one of the biggest news stories of our life. For me, I had spent my entire youth paranoid about nuclear war. When I was in fourth or fifth grade, I went to a religious school. Mm -hmm. that, has, that has nothing to do with it. Or maybe it does. I don't know. But my teacher was talking about the Russians. And he said, the Russians have ten nuclear missiles pointed at County Stadium. <laughs> In Milwaukee? <laughs> In Milwaukee. This is what he told us. As if it was a fact. My first grade teacher informed us that America wasn't going to the Olympics in 1980 because it was in Moscow and all of our athletes would be met with tanks. <laughs> and that wasn't because she couldn't pronounce her THs. All right, Atomic Blonde is done. Who is Satchel? Who knows? But one thing I do know is right, that right now we're going to do Seen It. Seen It! That, 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 that right now. Brian Kelly draws The Fabulous Baron Munchausen, 1962. Seen It. Not Seen It. You should see it. It's really amazing. I know. I've seen a clip of it at a dance club in Minneapolis. It looked really cool. This movie, and I'm sorry to be vulgar, this movie is the sperm that gave birth to Terry Gilliam. Everything about everything he's ever done, it's all in this movie. And this is a living storybook if you've ever seen it. I'm watching this thing. I don't know what's animated, what's live action. I don't know what's matte painting. I don't know what's real. And I don't care. You so, just said the sperm that gave birth to you. I know, Terry I know. That's sperm, sperm doesn't sperm give birth. I know, I know. <laughs> Steve Thorne asks, Tokyo Story? Yes. Seen it. I finally saw it. Yeah. And I did it the way I should. I saw it in the afternoon with a big old pot of coffee. <laughs> they often say it's one of the best movies ever made, and there's a reason for that, because it's really good. It's not boring, but it's not exciting. Mm -hmm. The word I came up with was humdrum. Yeah. And that's the point. It's sort of like the opposite of sensory overload. 
It's sensory underload. Like, it gives you so little, but then you start looking at it and noticing everything. Yeah. Like, all of the details of the shot composition, everything that's in the house, what's on the table, what's there, what's happening over there, what's that person doing in the background. You're seeing all this stuff because the movie's giving you so little stuff and mm -hmm. at such a slow pace. There are two astounding performances in the center of this. First off, the father, he's like 35 or 40 years old. Oh, he wow. filmed it. And he is the most convincing old man ever. Oh, yeah. I never would have guessed yeah. that. He lived long enough. He was in Dreams. Akira Kurosawa's Dreams. He's the old man at the end of the movie. Oh, wow. And then the, the daughter-in-law, the only loving character in the movie. When she smiles, she turns on the entire movie. Everything's going to be okay because she's smiling. At the end of the movie, that's the case. See, this is the thing about this movie. It's profoundly sad. Yeah. But nothing really very sad happens. In it. A loved one dies, but that happens. That's mm -hmm. part of life. It's not yeah. tragic. The happiest scene in the movie is when the old woman goes to visit the sister-in-law. Because she's got nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. And the sister-in-law is so happy. I'm thrilled that you've come to visit me because I'm so lonely. Yeah. And her happiness is just desperately sad. Yeah. Ben the Barbarian. Seen it. Guess who's coming to dinner? I'm watching for a diaspora lit class and really enjoyed the writing, but the film drags the resolution out. Seen it. I do not like this movie. Yeah. It is made with the best intentions. It's classic Stanley Kaufman where he's going to save the world and America and you with a movie. Stanley Kramer. Stanley Kramer. It's all very well intentioned. And I do like that it is about liberals dealing with the fact that maybe they're not as open minded as they think they are once their daughter shows up with Sidney Portier. Yeah. Also, Sidney Portier is flawless. Yeah. Not as an actor, of course he is a great actor, but I mean as a character in the, in the movie. That's a critique of a lot of his roles uh, it, in the 60s, is that he, he has to play a character with no flaws, with no sex drive, with no vices mm -hmm. to be accepted. Yeah. And that's not fair. Michael Davila writes, A Prairie Home Companion. Seen it. Seen it. This is Robert Altman's final film mm -hmm. before he died. A lot of people say it's one of his best. I despise it. You do? I think it's awful. Like, I don't think it's bad. I think it's awful. I was watching it, just awestruck that anyone would watch this and think, yep, it's done. Yep, this should be on a screen in front of people. <laughs> Baffled. Flabbergasted. It's so bad. I enjoyed it. I would not put it in my top five Altmans, maybe not even my top ten Altmans, but I enjoy it as a movie to just kind of hang out and watch. It has a line that I quote regularly, which is, there's no tragedy in the death of an old man. Hmm. If you're interested in lists, you can go to our website, welcome to the basement show.com. There is a list of all of our episodes and links to them. You can watch our entire catalog and there are PayPal donation buttons and you can click on them and make a one-time or rolling monthly donation to support this show. We appreciate all of our donors. Go to welcome to the basement show.com and check it out. And you can check out the unboxing show, which comes out this coming Friday. There, That is more Craig and Matt chat. And we also have other surprises. Come and take a look. And right now, take a look at this. The car. The really cool car. Volvo. It was very late in life that someone told me, it's actually pronounced Volvo. And I said, no. <laughs> Not going to do it. I don't care if you're right or wrong, I'm not going to do it. Straight from the tip of the Virgin Mary.